mentioned before, we try to make an idea which are the methods, technologies, focus on uh, metal and ceramics in terms of the five categories, metal matrix composite pro processes, industrial application of MMC, ceramic matrix composite processes, and of course, uh, some uh, industry. And of course, uh, industrial application of uh, CMC. Okay. It uh, often. Okay, also typical steps in life cycle assessment. We can see that at the very beginning we need materials and energy. Yeah? Nowadays it's a big problem with the energy, yeah? and of course with the materials. But we need material and energy of the uh, very beginning. Where? For material production, for manufacturing and construction, use, support, and maintenance. We need also the composition and material recovery and disposal. We need also material and uh, uh, energy. You can see also, let's say, the results, yeah? The results afterwards. We can reuse the material after the last step, yeah? We can use after uh, uh, the material recovery. You can see on the manufacturing and construction. And of course, you can see a material production. I mean, close loop recycle of the uh, materials. Also, going further uh, to the next uh, picture, you can see the interrelation between processing structure and properties of the material. Yeah? I mean, between processing, I mean, the processing has the big influence on the structure, and of course, the structure has the big influence on the properties. Yeah? And all together, also processing on application and performance, all together has, uh, have the influence on the application and the performance uh, of the uh, final product. So this is quite important. As, as I mentioned before, the material processing should be recognized nowadays in, as one part of the manufacturing. Otherwise, we cannot find, let's say, the optimum technology. We cannot uh, fix the optimum uh, technological parameters without, let's say, material processing. Another conclusion, manufacturing includes surface tra treatment and finishing. The assembly and joining of multiple parts, automation, quality control, coordination of the multiple te steps in order to create the final product. And the manufacturing is a significant seg segment of the world economy because now we are talking about uh, circular economy, yeah, and uh, that it means a lot of factors that uh, uh, have a big influence on the uh, circular uh, economy. Okay, so the goal, goal of material processing which is the goal of the material processing, is to convert the shapeless starting material into the useful object, into the useful part. So there are three basic approaches in order to achieve this goal. I'm sure that you already know. The first one is forming, illustrated by powder pressing. Okay? The second one is additive manufacturing, additive processing, illustrated by uh, 3D printing. And the last one, it's subtractive processing illustrated by turning. If you want to talk a little bit more about uh, each, uh, let's say, uh, materials uh, uh, processing, you can see on the first step, I mean forming illustrated by the powder pressing, that, of course, powder we put uh, inside in a hopper. Yeah? We need, of course, uh, a lower pinch. We need a die over there. We push. Yeah? We have a force. We have a pressure inside. And finally, we can get the results. About the fee FDM technology on the right side, or maybe we can call FFF, 
yeah, because of the patent uh, belongs on FDM technology and on industrial uh, 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 production, uh, you use not FDM, okay? Yeah, because of the patent. So I don't want to talk anymore. Uh, the director is uh, here, and uh, I think, of, co of course, uh, he is expert on 3D printing equipments. I'm sure, I'm sure. And uh, the last one, you can see the main parts of the substrate processing, including the speeder, ray, machining part, cutting tool, and uh, so on. So, processing method for metal, ceramic, and polymers in terms of five categories. I put in here some information about the methods, technologies, yeah, uh, for the five uh, the categories. I mean, the first one is the melt material. I mean, we use the raw material in the melt state, and we can talk here about the, in case of metal, sand casting, permanent mold casting, die ca casting, thank you. In case of ceramic, some example of the technologies, I mean float gla glass processes, fusion draw process, blow molding. In case of polymer extrusion, injection molding, reactive injection molding, blow molding, fuse deposition uh, modeling. So in case of uh, solid state of the material, we, in case of metal, some example of the technology, uh, extrusion, folding, rolling, wire drawing. In case of ceramic, it's rare one. We cannot talk about uh, you know, the, uh, the solid state of the material, raw materials. And in case of polymer, thermoforming. The next uh, category of the material, I mean powder, in case of metal, we have some example over there, unaxial isostatic pressing, hot pressing, hot isostatic pressing, selective laser melting. In case of ceramic, also, we can see over there the same, I mean, I mean unaxial and isostatic pressing, hot pressing, hot isostatic pressing, selective laser sintering, 3D printing with binder. Yeah, we use binder, you know, in case of nanopowder, yeah. To, to, to have a, a link between uh, 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 material, ceramic. And in case of polymer, rotational molding and selective laser uh, sintering. The next one, dispersion and solution. In case of metal, we can talk about the powder injection molding and coating. In case of ceramic, slip casting, tape casting, extrusion, powder injection molding. In case of polymer coating and stereolithography. And in case of vapor, if we are talking about the metal sputtering, evaporation, chemical vapor deposition, rare technology in case of ceramic, and in case of uh, polymer, also thermoforming. So now I'm going a uh, little bit to make a short presentation about uh, some of technology, not all, because there are uh, many over there, but I uh, try to make a presentation for the, let's say, most important. Also, uh, Harshit uh, made the presentation for the uh, spray up molding and so on, including the manual one, including the automated uh, uh, process, uh, and uh, the first one, contact molding. You can see over there the contact molding, the layers of the matrix, uh, the reinforced fiber as are deposited into a mold that can be made from metal, resin, or glass, as Harshit already uh, mentioned. And after each deposit ensures pressing a joint trigger layer to the next with a roll contact. Yeah? I don't want to, to talk anymore. And of course, uh, we can use this method uh, uh, out, carry out for the small boats. It's uh, important to know. Mold forming is done by pressing layers of matrix and reinforcing element between a mold and counter mold. Yeah, you can see the mold and the counter mold. And this technology, it's important to see that 
can be applied to the medium, uh, medium series and product around 20 pieces parts per day. So we are not talking about high productivity of uh, this uh, technology. And the molding process is used in this case to build uh, for the automotive and uh, aeronautics uh, uh, industry. Full injection molding. A little bit too different here about full injection molding. I mean completely on the left side, I mean the complete injection molding with thermal dependent matrix and complete injection molding with thermal independent uh, maxim. We already know the injection molding uh, process. Yeah, We will focus uh, next days more in the injection molding uh, process and uh, we will discuss uh, the results, uh, different uh, product that we uh, got. And the injection uh, molding uh, uh, on the, on the uh, below uh, figures. So the technology, of course, uh, allows uh, for large parts with complex shapes by made from poly polyurethane reinforced with glass fiber. You can see here a little board on our cars. And uh, of course, uh, the productivity is uh, uh, highest and uh, the products are complex one. And then in the same time, the products uh, has, uh, you know, have the uh, higher mechanical and thermal uh, uh, resistance. Uh, another uh, method, centrifugal, uh, centrif centrifugal uh, method, the process is used for tubes manufacturing. Running filament to obtain tubes are great uh, length with frequency up to uh, let's say 500 uh, uh, kilo of composite uh, per day. Uh, nowadays, uh, nowadays uh, it's used the resin together with the reinforcement. You can see here we get the composite structure and using the rotation and the uh, mold inside uh, we can get the final uh, uh, product. Um, the multi-layer plates mixture, you can see over there, that technology is uh, interesting because uh, can be applied to obtain flat or corrugated plates. Yeah, we need, we use, yeah, this kind of uh, plates. And flat plates are preformed, let's say, subsequent operations such as hot stamping and uh, uh, bending. So together, we use the cellulose film over there, the resin, fiber, uh, glass fabric, uh, and afterwards, uh, together with the cellulose film, inside of the polymer polymerization uh, chamber, we uh, uh, got the final uh, uh, product. So the blow molding. The blow molding, you already know, converts the preform into a shape by deforming it under the air pressure against the mold. So the material is in a molten state, yeah? And in case of uh, blow molding of polymer, there are two ways to make the parison uh, as a first step, step. Extrusion blow molding, you can see on figure 16, and injection blow molding on the figure uh, 17. So, uh, you can see here, I think, uh, clear the extrusion blow molding on the rotational wheel, yeah? which, are the, the, which are the steps, conveyor to finishing machine, blow mechanism, extruder, form tube, close, and pinch, cooling, and afterwards we can reject, we can uh, obtain the uh, final uh, product. Uh, you, can see also, you can see also the injection molding machine Let's share uh, the injection molding machine steps uh, in two main steps because on the first one we will get first the perison and afterwards we took it, we we'll put inside of the mold and uh, we get the uh, final uh, product. So the first one is the placing core road in injection mold, yeah, the sec first one. Injection molding, the second one. The first one is the removal of the molded perison and we will carry on with the next one. You can see over there to put inside of the perison, blow, okay, the air inside, and the materials, of course, we take the shape uh, of the inside uh, uh, mold, and afterwards we we'll open the mold and we'll get the uh, product. <coughs> we have in uh, our city the Omco company, Omco. It's from... Uh, uh, 
Yeah, we have Omco company. I think you hear that. Yeah, from uh, Netherlands, from uh, Belgium. Yeah, from Belgium. They have uh, around 1,000 employees in our city. Yeah, and they make uh, glass uh, different uh, bottle, glass bottle for different uh, company, uh, whiskey and so on, uh, water and so on. And they, they are uh, really developed, yeah, more than uh, 100, uh, I think, CNC machine, yeah, with 1,000, yeah, yeah, really, yeah. And they are very good, and our students, uh, we have a, uh, a agreement with the company in order to make, you know, the final of the year, to make uh, some exchange uh, with our uh, students. So. This is quite good uh, company, and uh, they use this technology uh, very often. OK. So rotational uh, molding. Rotational molding, this technology uh, converts polymer powder into the hollow shape. You can see. So the steps are as follow. I mean, we need the charging the powder into the mold. We need, afterwards, the heating. Of course, we, we close the mold. We need the heating. Yeah, the heating is uniform distributed. Yeah, we uh, need afterwards cooling and rotation around two axes, and of course, finally to remove the product. Uh, here, uh, the director can ask me. Yeah, how can control? How can measure? Yeah, also the thickness. Thickness. Yeah. So. Uh, it's a, it, it's a little bit difficult because it's up to the uh, quantity of the material inside of the mold. Yeah? And here it's outer, let's say, diameter as main dimension that it's important to be uh, controlled yeah? from this uh, point of view. OK. Hmm? Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, uh, of course, there are technical parameters here, yeah, which is the temp cooling temperature, which is the speed, uh, and so on. But it's up to the material used. It's up to the final product that we want to, to get, uh, uh, and so on. So the reactive injection molding, in this case, uh, we need two liquids reactants are mixed together, which are mixed together, and, and then uh, injected into the mold. You can see, we can use the first reactant, second one, recirculation, of course, mentoric cylinder, yeah, for both, and afterwards mixing heat and inside of the mold we can obtain the final uh, product. So this is, let's say, the general uh, sketch uh, of the uh, reactive uh, injection uh, molding. Fuse deposition mod modeling. Fuse deposition modeling, let's say you already know. We talk uh, with a uh, director from the private uh, company that I started a PhD thesis focus on uh, uh, focus on B, let's say, B component 3D printing. Because we are talking, it's a new, let's say, term. Because we are talking about the B injection molding. Okay? Because we can have in, in case of injection molding, we can have two cylinders, yeah? And we can make the injection on perpendicular on horizontal plane inside of the mold cavities. So I introduce here another, let's say, term. I mean, B 3D printing, yeah? To use, let's say, two extruders and to print different materials. Of course, we have to study, we have to know uh, the properties of the initial materials in order to obtain what we need on the end. As I mentioned before, in case of composite materials, it's important, it's important to know the initial requirements yeah, for the final uh, product. Uh, Hashit, when I was in the US, if you remember, was a great uh, industry over there, attended many industries on uh, 3D printings. Yeah? yeah? Did you remember? Yeah? yeah? Many, a lot. Many. Yeah, many, many companies. And uh, I saw over there different products, uh, 3D printing products, I mean, with uh, two materials and so on. And uh, this is quite important because uh, 
uh, on uh, uh, B3D printing, yeah, it's important the interface between, between the material. We can create our own interfaces. Yeah? Because, uh, 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 you know, uh, if the interface uh, uh, is longer, yeah, the mechanical properties can be better. So it's up to the, the length of the interfaces. So from this point of view, I want to study with uh, our new PhD uh, student, my PhD students, uh, to study the 3D printing, the B3D printing of biodegradable material. So I, we will use, let's say, fiber wood, and we will use, let's say, uh, 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 liquid wood, because we know uh, the properties, the initial properties of the material, and we can uh, start, let's say, what happened on the, uh, on the interface with uh, both uh, uh, material. Uh, Stereolithography technology, SLA, is a high-resolution additive process that uses photo, let's say, curable liquid resin. And you can see over there which are the main components uh, of, the <coughs> of the equipment. As we already know, uh, the 3D printing technology has have the same uh, steps, doesn't matter, let's say, the, the, the uh, technology. Uh, and from this point of view, the system, in case of uh, SLA technology, consists of an enclosed chamber, you can see over there, containing a buffer resin, as well as a platform, as well as a platform, and, uh, of course, uh, uh, positioning uh, uh, system. Of course, also including the scanner laser beam, the part, and, of course, you know, the uh, going down the platform uh, distance is equal with the layer uh, thickness. Sir, what is this photo curable liquid resin means? F what? Photo curable liquid resin means. Uh, the type, the type. If you want to, 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 to obtain the shape, okay. yeah? This is, this is the photo liquid resin. Yeah, we, we need the shape. And uh, afterwards, using the laser uh, beam, we can obtain the... required shape. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so metal matrix composite processes. Uh, I put here some information about the shape casting by sand casting process as an example. So casting is an important process for produ producing uh, complex 3D parts uh, uh, or, or uh, pieces. The melt shape casting process involves curing a melt into a mold or onto surfaces where it solidifies into a shape. The first step is design of the mold according to the shape request and the process uh, for the metals which have low enough viscosity for efficient gravity induced flow. You can see here the shape casting, uh, let's say, categories, uh, uh, processes, extendable mold and metal mold. In first case, we can talk about the permanent pattern, patterns bonded sand molding, slurry molding, and non-bonding sand uh, molding, and uh, extendable pattern, lost foam, and lost wax. In case of metal uh, mold, gravity, low pressure, and high pressure die uh, casting can be on the hot and can be also on the uh, cold uh, uh, stain. In case of uh, schematic step for shape casting, you can see here starting material, melt preparation, uh, on the second step, design, mold preparation, and all together pouring and filling, and afterwards followed by cooling and solidification, part removal, and post-forming operation, just in case. <coughs> Permanent mold casting is used for higher volume production. And you can see on the figure 24, the permanent mold casting. I mean, on the A, low pressure casting, on the B uh, sketch, you can see the uh, vacuum uh, uh, casting. Uh, it's easy to understand uh, how it's working, yeah, both uh, technologies. And uh, I'd like to go to the mold casting. I mean, the metal uh, melt is driving under high pressure into the permanent mold. Mold casting is limited to lower melting point, non-ferrous alloy, I put, I, I put over there aluminum, magnesium, copper, and zinc alloys. There are two types of mold casting processes based on the handling of metal melt. 
the hot chamber, you have the uh, sketch uh, down. The hot chamber mold casting incorporates the reservoir for a melt. In uh, cold mold casting, the uh, melt is prepared in a separate furnace, and then a shot of the melt is transferred via an automated ladle to the short sleeve, which is connected uh, to the die. You can see here the gas oil accumulation, of course, the piston, uh, the nozzle, and inside of the mold, yeah, between the platinum, the injection molding machine, and uh, uh, the toggle uh, clamp. In case of die uh, casting, you can see with uh, cold chamber casting, it's the uh, same, uh, but uh, we do not have uh, we don't have the hot chamber uh, uh, inside of the equipment. Extrusion. Extrusion is used to make simple profile, such as uh, flat sheets, roads, tubes, complex profile, as honeycombs, and of course, uh, another example. Extruded products, after solidification, rarely uh, require significant, let's say, post-processing operation, with the exception of the simple cutting, cutting uh, length on the end of the process uh, of the extruded uh, uh, product. The single screw extruded, uh, you can see on the uh, figure 26. And uh, of course, we put the polymer pellets inside of the hopper. We have uh, heaters, yeah? And of course, we, we will take into consideration the material that we used, yeah, for each material we have a uh, uh, melting uh, temperature and so on. Uh, rotation uh, screw, burial, and of course, uh, on the end we obtain the uh, product uh, solidification uh, in water bath or child rolls, and finally we can get the uh, products, uh, product. So we have the drive unit and, let's say, three main parts, I mean feed, compression, and metering yeah, for this uh, uh, equipment. Uh, the sputtering system showing vacuum and gas handling. Yeah, uh, you can see that the target, the plasma ions, the substrate, yeah, the negative, and uh, the process gas that we needed in this uh, case. We need also the pump and the uh, viscous flow uh, pump. Uh, I put some information how is working the sputtering. I mean, the process, as you already know, involves the bombarding uh, target with the high energy ions, uh, let's say enough energy. Uh, also, to create the ions, a process gas such as argon is fed into the vacuum chamber. Uh, and an electric field is applied to break down to get such as the atoms, uh, uh, ionic pro processes. And the eject ato atoms travel to the substrate where they are collected to form a film. So concerning the industrial application, you can see over there that uh, this type of composite uh, can be used in uh, aerospace military. You can see also in our in uh, aircraft around 50% are composite uh, structure, uh, are not colored here, but you can see the, 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 the green one, yeah, highlight with carbon laminate, carbon sandwich, fiberglass, aluminum, aluminum steel or titanium. So uh, another one example, helicopter blade, you can see also the structure, how uh, many uh, composite materials uh, are used uh, inside of the uh, helicopter uh, uh, blade. Woven glass outer skin, 45% uh, carbon fiber, staining lease in this part of the, of the blade, heater material, glass fiber, 40% also in this area, carbon fiber, and uh, so on. Uh, we can use also on civil engineering, on electronics, and uh, on energy. Yeah, we have a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, equipments in order to, to, to get the new energy. And I think also there are 
uh, here in uh, India. Automotive and transportation. Nowadays, in uh, automotive industry, around 20 percent yeah, uh, of the total car used the polymer materials. Typical modern vehicle, automotive, are made up to 50,000 uh, parts with uh, 600 plastic parts. The main classes of the automotive application for polymer, you can see interior uh, inside trims, around 45-50% of the plastic found, external parts, 20-35 with plastics, structural parts and fuel system around 30% and under the hood application around 12 uh, up to 15%. Uh, I don't know if is it uh, good or not. Uh, if it is not uh, good, uh, we have uh, to find another solution yeah, to, replace, uh, to replace plastic. But as I mentioned before, the plastic industry is so huge, yeah, it's cheap. Yeah, the material, most of material are, are, are cheap. So, no, director? Huh? It's cheap and it's very difficult yeah, to replace the plastic material with another material, maybe biodegradable bio material. When I was in uh, uh, Ningbo uh, in China on the Institute uh, of Research Technology or something like that, you know, yeah, we try to make a presentation how to make the replacement uh, with the biodegradable material and uh, of course uh, they highlight that the industry uh, plastic industry is so huge and uh, will be many many years in front in order to obtain let's say different uh, plastic what do you think director from this point of view We can uh, get also, uh, let's say, different uh, products in the sport industry. We already use, yeah, nowadays, the composite material. Of course, important fields is medical one. On our mechanical engineering faculty, there, are over, there is over there a strong research, yeah, on the, the metallical, metal parts, yeah, to make different, let's say, implants uh, and so on, yeah. They are very, let's say, on high research with the U.S. And uh, I, I think they have good results. Also, today was mentioned three, four times, yeah, the marine industry that we can use this type of uh, composite material. And of course, could be another example from this point of view. Ceramic matrix composite, CMC. Let's see a broad definition, let's say, of composite, because on the technical literature mentions something like, th like that. A broad definition of ceramic is any unorganic, non-metallic material. If you want to talk about uh, the definition of the ceramic, uh, we can uh, put something like that. Any solid material that is not plastic or metal can be defined as a ceramic. Okay, so the, which are the main, let's say, important properties of the ceramic matrix composite? Resistance to wear and corrosion, yeah, it's important one. High tensile strength, low thermal expansion, high thermal resistance, the electric strength, electrical resistance. So the ceramic uh, uh, matrix composite is, uh, let's say, important research field and the uh, professor from uh, Japan, uh, his conference is focused only on ceramic matrix composite, only on ceramics. Yeah, it's quite interesting, interesting. over there, you know, attend uh, around 300 uh, att attendees from 30, 35 countries, yeah, based only on these topics. So I put also some information about uh, the ceramic material, also the common name, uh, chemical formula, and of course, uh, some uh, uh, color. 
Uh, ceramic uh, matrix composite methods are ma based on powders uh, uh, consolidation and chemical uh, methods. So you can see on the figure 28 the chemical vapor uh, infiltration. So inside of the uh, chamber we, we, we need the heating, heating area, of course uh, use the bow heating element and uh, inside of the composite with graphite between the graphite support, yeah? Uh, we had uh, a hot surface around 1,000 uh, uh, Celsius, and um, uh, on the on the last layer, the cold surface around uh, 800 uh, uh, Celsius. Uh, application of this composite are limited limited to the high temperature. Yeah, uh, there is a great potential, as I mentioned, in the military. I mean, fighter jet planes, aerospace, and transportation. Uh, if we want to talk about the industrial furnaces, are used for the energy conversion system, gas turbines, and heat engines. Yeah, it's uh, also important. Silicon carbide, reinforced with carbon carbide, is among, let's say, the most widely used ceramic matrix uh, uh, composite. And there are several methods for synthesize of composite uh, carbon, silicon uh, carbon. Uh, polymer infiltration followed by, by uh, pyrolyse. You can see uh, on the first step the ceramic fiber, infiltration precursor polymer on the second one, the fourth one polymer matrix composite, and after the uh, pyrolyse process, around 800 to 1,300 Celsius, we can get uh, finally the ceramic uh, uh, composite. And the steps of the silicon infiltration, carbon fiber with polymer impregnated here. After the, the, the chemical processes, we uh, get the carbon matrix composite. Uh, and uh, together in the silicon, yeah, you can see, buff, we obtain finally the uh, uh, product, uh, silicon carbon matrix composite. Uh, a little bit about the application mainly mainly used in aerospace uh, industry because of the higher tensile strength. Also can be used on manufacturing in the spacecraft heat shields also. Uh, because you know on the uh, Earth uh, atmosphere or re-entering uh, the uh, Earth uh, uh, atmosphere, they uh, must withstand temperature around uh, one 1,500 for a few uh, minutes. Another application is gas turbine components, to, uh, but also in order to obtain the medical implants as well uh, uh, up, uh, industry. Another application of composite is brake disc of racing car and iron planes because of the higher properties. Sir, how this material will uh, be at such a high temperature, 1,500 degrees Celsius? We are making this with pyrolysis, which is at 800 degrees Celsius, and other material also there. But we are talking here about the chemical processes, yeah? And, uh, you know, chemical processes, please. Yeah, because we are talking here about the chemical processes. And we know that the pyrolysis process yeah, is between 800 to 1,500 Celsius. So when temperature will rise to 1500 degrees Celsius, that process again will take place? Yeah. And that material will melt? The material will make what? Material will melt or that will be deformed due to this high temperature. Yeah, and afterwards we be, uh, you can see over there on the buff of silicon, and we get the final product. Okay, silicon can be at a high temperature. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what are the reinforcements? The, the reinforcements? What are the typical reinforcements used in, in these kind of composites, ceramic matrix composites? Mm, because we're talking yeah, yeah. about high temperatures, right? So yeah, uh, the reinforcement, of course, uh, must, you know, be uh, to have the same behavior right. of the high temperature. Right. This is important right. because there are few reinforcement with the high, uh, let's say, so temperature be, behavior. It will be mostly ceramics only, right? Some yeah. other ceramics yeah. will be Yeah, Al uh, other ceramics yeah. reinforcement, it's, it's important right. because uh, otherwise, well, because it's not difficult to... No, uh, no, because uh, we cannot talk about the polymers around 300, 350, or something like that. So, uh,
medical and dental, you can see some example also, long-term implants, minimally invasive surgical instruments, dental equipment on electronics, high temperature sensor windows, complex substrates, hermetic seals, computer, industrial also micro wear resistant nozzle, manufacturing tooling dies, synthetic fiber production, wire guides, thermal protection, micro nozzle, inkjet nozzle, yeah, of course are made from uh, ceramic, flow uh, symmetry nozzle, surface mount technology, uh, and so on. Of course, uh, the example can uh, carry on yeah, with different uh, industrial uh, uh, application. Uh, on our uh, uh, research, I will make the presentation next day on the polymer surface, I mean on the biodegradable part, yeah, we cut coated with ceramic particle. I use three layers, yeah, at the very beginning it was difficult and I was afraid, really, yeah, to put, you know, uh, the ceramic uh, um, uh, layers uh, uh, to, to coating directly the polymers, yeah. I was afraid. And I put, the, I put the metallic layer first. And afterwards, we put uh, the ceramic layers, uh, five passes, seven passes, nine passes. CBDs? Yeah, yeah, ceramic, yeah. Uh, and afterwards, I decided, yeah, to use directly the ceramic layers, yeah, on the polymer surfaces. Okay. Yeah, with the same layers, layers, number of the layers, five, seven, and nine. And the results was okay on nine layers, on nine layers. I don't know what happened, let's say, after we will carry on the coating process, I mean 12 and so on. We use the plasma deposition, yeah, and you know the distance, yeah, was quite important and uh, we have, yes, 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 because uh, afterwards uh, uh, it's uh, dangerous to melting the polymer uh, surfaces. But it was okay. What type of material is used for micro wear resistant nozzles? <laughs> Different uh, ceramic, mm. aluminum oxide. Uh, aluminum oxide. Different, different materials. Uh, it's up to the application, it's up to the range of the final use uh, products, I mean the temperature range. Well, mm. it's difficult to define exactly yeah, which uh, material. We have to start with the final characterization of the product, what we want to get, yeah? and afterwards to choose exactly which are the initial material. Well, it's difficult to, to say exactly uh, for the micro nozzle we use, let's say, uh, silicon carbon. Let's use the same, uh, it's difficult from this point of view. Actually, the silicon product is used for micro Yeah, we can use silicon carbon for the micro nozzle, yeah, we can use. Nowadays, that uh, liquid metal uh, 3D printing is a process that is being researched on. Where induction heating, uh, mm -hmm, you try mm -hmm. to pour out metal, they use these uh, silicon carbide. Silicon carbide. Silicon carbide. Yeah, 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 silicon carbide. Yeah. Okay. So, the ceramic injection molding, CIM process. This process is a combination of particle material, injection molding, and sintering sciences. So the complex shapes are achievable in ultra-hard materials that are difficult, let's say, costly, or impossible to get through traditional processes. So the ceramic injection uh, uh, molding is also able to combine multiple components to that previously, previously required assembly. Yeah? I put here some information, let's say, about the steps on the ceramic injection molding. I mean, first one, mold making, feedstock preparation, molding, online inspection, divide, sintering, the, uh, densification, and post-manufacturing, uh, just in case, okay, and afterwards the final uh, inspection of the product. So what means mold making? Of course, in-house mold making, and mold building with CAD CAM technology, we can obtain yeah, using the uh, usually steps uh, uh, how to design uh, the mold, uh, we can obtain the mold. 
The second one, feed stock preparation. Ceramic powder is selected based on our customer requirements. That's why it's important to see, yeah? Because also director asked to the, uh, to the customer which are the initial requirements, yeah? And afterwards, of course, he started to, to make the 3D printers. Uh, the molding, especially tailored injection molding machine are used to inject the feedstock into the mold, which is similar to the plastic injection molding technology design. However, the tooling requires very tight tolerance in this case. Yeah, we cannot uh, talk about the tight uh, tolerance in case uh, of the others, okay, materials. And we are resistant components to stand up to the abrasive powders being molded. What means online inspection? This in process inspection provides real time feedback, reducing cost and improving quality. Nowadays, on CNC manufacturing and so on, uh, we know very well that uh, the online control, the online uh, inspection is used. Okay? We have information from online process because uh, uh, also it's important. Debind. The binders are removed via evaporation and exothermic reaction, leaving a fraction of the binder material behind. Uh, sintering, depending on the material parts are next, let's say, uh, sintered in another oxidizing atmosphere, reducing atmosphere or in vacuum. Densification, for certain, ap certain application, the ceramic injection molding parts undergo hot isostatic pressure in order to increase the density and uh, strength. Post-manufacturing, for application up to the surface finishing, or let's say uh, uh, accuracy precision behind, as sintering capabilities, finishing operation are available. And final inspection, using the latest, let's say, metrology equipment, of course, we ensure components uh, take into account the, the initial uh, uh, initial requirements uh, of the uh, product. Sir? Please. Feed, feedstock preparation, are we using this uh, pure ceramic or we are adding something else in that? No, for binders, ceramic. Binders, are we adding uh, any types also of binders? binders? Also what binders, yeah. What also what binders, what ceramic what material and so on. What types of the binders generally we are using? Oh, also, there are, uh, there are also different types of the binders. Different types of the binders. And because, you know, uh, during the 3D printer, yeah, uh, with the nanoparticle, I mean ceramic nanoparticles, yeah, the model, for uh, example, the physical... Like, uh, we are going for L203 or silicon carbide, and then are we adding any plastic thermosetting, plastic or... Is yes, a binder, is yes, a binder. Yes, could be possible. Yes, could be. Yeah. Okay, second thing is uh, there are different types of the debinding process. So yeah. Here it is written, can we use the chemical debinding? We can use for the debinder uh, process, chemical process. We can use, let's say, simple process with air pressure and so on to clean the surfaces as in 3D printing with the ceramic nanoparticles. We can do, we can do. Because on the, on the uh, ceramic uh, 3D printing, yeah, uh, you know, the machine split the height of the piece, yeah, of the part in the layers. And afterwards, yeah, they make alone the calculus how many points of the binder yeah, are necessary on the surface because it's up to the surfaces. Yeah. One more question. Yeah. The ceramic injection molding, how it is uh, different than the powder injection molding? Uh, this powder mold, powder injection. There are not uh, difference no difference from this point of view. Yeah. Also, the technical powder, parameters. Powder, sorry, powder metal. I'm not saying this is a powder injection molding, and one is a powder metal. Yeah, powder there is no metallurgical part, and one is a metal injection or ceramic injection molding parts. So, is there any difference, or both are same? No, no, no. We can use the same steps for the injection molding both technology. Have no yeah, but okay. it's of course are different the technological parameters uh, and so on because we are talking about different materials, of course. The powder metal also can be used for this uh, ceramic. We, we injection can, molding. we can use, yeah. Okay. Another process called metal injection molding, which is very similar. Uh, yes, in the melting injection molding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Instead of ceramic, you use a metal. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it is only good for small components. Very small parts can be made. Uh, in fact, a lot of the that process became popular with the iPhone 
starting yes. to use a lot of yes. stuff. Yes, yes, complex. With the complex, with the complex shape. Correct, correct. The complex shape of the. Right, right. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So complex shape of the product. The big parts are not possible through this process. Yes. No, yeah. no. So it's only. Small it's not in use. It's yes. not in use to obtain the big part. Right, right. Because yeah. At the um, at the stage of the uh, what is that brown part, green part, when the burning happens, the, there is a lot of. Uh, what is the right way, way to say it? The part shrinks mm -hmm. and there is a lot mm -hmm. of uh, volume shrinkage uh, of yeah. the part. So, yeah, dimension yeah. control with the bigger part is very, very tough. So yeah. Actually, yeah. there was an industry who wanted to uh, metal injection mold large parts. So, we explored that a lot, but it is not, not possible. There is yeah. no way to control the shrinkage. Yeah, every, this is the part shrinkage is the, is the important point of view yes. Yeah, for the uh, big, let's say, uh, part. Yes. Uh, with the complex shape. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes. This so is uh, very small parts. Yeah. So it's part. easy. Yeah. It's easy for the small part. Yeah. Okay. So multi-layer ceramic technology, HTCC and LTCC. I put some conclusion over there. I mean the current trend of the miniaturization and el in electronics and communication. Because this is the brand on electronics, yeah, to make smaller and smaller everything, yeah. So um, from this point of view, on this rise, creating demands for packaging solution with the increasingly complex requirements. Uh, ceramic to metallic sealing represents one such approach, and it has uh, the potential for the further research uh, development. In these seals, various types of the electrical feed roads are embedded into a special ceramic material offering, let's say, totally new possibilities, new capabilities for uh, the encapsulation of the complex electronic and optoelectronic uh, systems. So the driving factors for innovative, innovative packing solutions with the ceramic multi-layer technology, uh, HTCC, is the mi miniaturization and the cost saving. You can see also on the figure the high temperature multi ceramic, uh, ceramic, the steps of the technology. You can put here, you can see on the right side the green sheet uh, stamping and filling, uh, the third one screen printing of the pattern, stacking, uh, laminating, uh, sintering, plating, and afterwards, you know, to obtain the part. And low temperature multi ceramic, ceramic, yeah? of course, because it's low temperature, you can see the range of the temperature and, of course, uh, also uh, the steps of the uh, technology. Of course, uh, this technology, it's a little bit uh, difficult, yeah, because uh, it's used on uh, 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 different, uh, let's say, industry, especially on electronics, on telecommunication, uh, and so on, uh, to obtain uh, uh, small uh, parts. So. I have also some uh, information about the advantage over there. It's availability, the availability of the variety of mechanical, thermal, optical, and electrical simulation tools. Worldwide customer support from local manufacturing facilities with the technical competence centers. Uh, concerning the HTCC, excellent mechanical stability easy integration into the metal housing due to the match thermal coefficient of expansion. Yeah, it's uh, important this uh, coefficient. Uh, high thermal conductivity, use of non-knowable metal passes, additional planting reveals, and another characteristics for LTCC. Uh, excellent properties provide low dielectric losses, high conductivity metal, and so on. High electrical conductivity, uh, and another uh, properties. So uh, this was the, let's say, short, uh, not so uh, longer yeah, presentation about metal and matrix composite. So I think a little bit yeah, earlier also. Yeah. So about the questions. Please, sorry. Sir, if we mix two clay, different clay materials in a different portion, they called as a ceramic uh, composite or not? 
the composition of the two different clay yeah i am mixing them in a different different proportion yeah two or three two or three different clay okay having different different properties yeah. and i am mixing each other yeah i am making a combination of two or three different clay it is come in the category of ceramic composite or not no only ceramic is used yeah you cannot you cannot mix you know different because of the different properties yeah different type only of ceramics okay Two different steels. Uh, we forge very well. Yeah. Okay, so the dust that comes under the MMC. Process. Yeah. Metal matrix composite. Yeah. Th that's what was my question. Does that come out? Yeah. Of course, in metal matrix composite. Yeah. Sir, uh, my question is somebody asked about alloys versus composites. Can you address that? Because there's always a confusion whether alloys are composites or not. What do you think? Are not? Are or not? I don't think they're composites. Yeah. I think composites have that distinctness in the materials. Yeah, the composite, yeah. as I mentioned before, you know, consists of at least two materials. Right. Right. The alloys. Yes. Yeah. One it's one not material. different materials. Yeah. Yeah. This is right. my opinion. But right. so take into account different, you know, uh, the literature, technical literature. Yeah. yeah? You can find over there different, uh, we say, approaches from this point of view. Some materials don't alloy completely. They only yeah. partially alloy, so it's yeah. very complicated to say. In, yeah, yeah, in yeah. that is uh, quite a real, real uh, different material. Like in the process that I was talking about, you can do copper tungsten. So copper tungsten, they don't form alloys easily. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. takes a long, even if you keep it in the alloying temperature for even a day yeah. in a furnace. Yeah. There will be some little bit of alloying that happens, but beyond that, it doesn't alloy. Yeah, yeah. So it's a weird material that comes out. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. This is. This is the definition. Be, uh, this is. I, I share your opinion. This yes. is also my opinion. Yes. Sir. Yeah, but we find in the technical literature that alloys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah different. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much again for attending the second lecture. Yeah, for me today and the third lecture for the whole uh, courses. Thank you very much. Thank you.